Minnesota and Leslie Ford. Uh, taking off from team made by the gentleman there, uh, let me postulate this. One of the less desirable effects of the migration of eyeballs from print, what you call mainstream media, print and, and probably television as well, to online, one of the less desirable effects to my mind is that increasingly pockets of people in any highly wired society will become very knowledgeable about a very narrow span of things, subjects. Because they can go on the net and they can zero in on specific things, be it the, the, the drinking habits of a pop star or, or some other particular hobby. And therefore, increasingly, a highly wired, highly online savvy society will lose the kind of consensus that is necessary for the government to govern effectively and efficiently. Where previously uh, a nation can talk with itself, so to speak, through the mainstream media and the government of the day, not necessarily just in Singapore, but anywhere, can get its policies explained, understood, debated through uh, a mainstream media, through print largely, in fact, so that everyone in that society can be on the same page. Now, with all this fragmentation of eyeballs over every form of uh, wireless or digital communication, that ability for society to be able to, to, to share thoughts on the same page you know, through one fixed medium, I think, is being eroded. My, I have a, as a result of that, I have two questions, or I have a two-parted question. Do you share this view you know, that increasingly it will be difficult for a government to govern effectively and efficiently because national attention is now fragmented over so many different media? And if you share that view, it, it, is, it doesn't really matter whether this will come today, tomorrow, or five years hence, because if one accepts that this erosion is going to continue, it will come one day. Now, if you share this perception, then what, in your view, can a government do to try to ensure that there is a, uh, a, a focus of national attention, a forum in which you know, the nation can actually talk within itself or talk with itself? And, and, and I know part of the answer would be uh, to try to strengthen, bolster the existing mainstream media in particular print, uh, but I'm, I'm afraid I would need to probe you more. What precisely do you think, and I'm now I'm bringing the focus to Singapore, what precisely do you think the Singapore government can do to ensure that the mainstream media, in particular newspapers, will not lose their relevant impact and reach you know, in this very fragmented media uh, era? Thank you. Uh, well, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, different hypotheses embedded in uh, Leslie's remarks and questions. Uh, the first is that um, new media allows people to go very narrowly in depth into topics that they are interested in, and he postulates that as an area of concern. Um, I'm not so sure that I share that as a concern. I tell you what my concern is with regard to the new media. Uh, and if I watch how young people uh, and their habits in, on the net, it is many windows open at the same time, moving from one subject to the next, short attention spans. Here I may be generalizing a little bit, and I do apologize for that. Um, they consume information and news in very, very small, discrete packages. You know, something that I can read in 60 seconds, 90 seconds. I know what the headline is. I know what the gist of it is, and I move on. What? And, and so you do have breath if you are jumping from one place to another, all right? What's the downside of that? The downside of that, actually, is that 
unlike reading a long article and getting as much of the information as possible, as well as that emotional connectedness that you get when you read some stories, I think you lose that part when you don't spend enough time on a particular topic. Let's say the press runs a half page on the plight of the poor, the needy in Singapore. Right? And they have a number of different stories and examples embedded into it. The version that comes out online because of space or because of the way it is packaged may be very, very different from the version in print. And if you go only to the online version, I'm not sure you get that emotional connectedness and the questions that you would ask yourself as to what is it that I can do or ought to do in order to be able to contribute to the alleviation of the plight of some of these people. So that, to me, actually is one of my greater concerns. Less so people who are prepared to go and explore a subject in great depth. They are prepared to look at different sources of information and hopefully apply their minds to triangulate and ultimately to internalize that which is confirmed, which is credible. All right. So I have a slightly different concern altogether. I think the net allows us to do a number of things, including very quick posts. You know, on everything that you want, you can postulate a question and you can throw it out there and you might hopefully get two, three hundred people responding yes or no, yes or no to all sorts of different questions. All right? And for example, you can go to the net and say, should the government remove GST? Chances are that many people will say yes. Uh, or if you are looking and zooming into transportation, for example, should the government ask the operators to run buses more frequently, to run trains more frequently? Should the government build more lines? Should the government do away with ERP? And so on and so forth. All of this, you can do your polls, you can, you can say that it allows people to participate more actively because their views are being sought, their views are being consulted. They can very easily answer yes, no, maybe if you give them that third option. And for all the questions that I've postulated, I think you'll probably get a yes answer. Many of us would like to be able to eat rich desserts, but we don't want to grow fat. Many of us would want to retire comfortably, but we may not be prepared to save our money for it. We want lower taxes, but at the same time, we also want better public services. We want maybe free education at the tertiary level, so on and so forth. 